Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR today, Tuesday morning. It's June 30th, 2020. I'm the man they call Meathead, and as always, got to get a little business in here. I'm asking you to subscribe. I'm asking you to like. I'm asking you to love. Love me, please. Love me. Love the PWR today and love the PWR 360. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Facebook and get a like and subscribe in there. And that way, you know, when new content's coming, mm -hmm. there's prime times that are popping up as well. Uh, with Shane Helms, with Dave Hero and Damian Nelson. So speaking of Dave Hero, you know, last night, yesterday, was David Hero's birthday. Good morning, David. Good morning. How are you, man? You know, I'm not the one trying to recover from yesterday. What what kind of shenanigan-laced day did you have? Especially the Hero weekend. I mean, because well, Cal's I mean, delicious. Yeah, Cal's birthday was on Sunday. Mine was yesterday. You know, I mean, 48, man. Shenanigans are... That only happens now once a year at WrestleMania. That's it. That's <laughs> it for me, you know. But you know, it was a nice, easy going weekend. Uh, you know, Uncle Al Snow was in town, so we got to hang out with uh, you know family and had a little cookout. It was super nice and easy. Nice. I was going to say it wasn't a day nice on the and... boat because he got rid of the hero boat. Now that thing's yeah, gone. Yeah. Well, it's because like Michigan, the water levels are so high that our pier is now submerged so even if i wanted to put the boat in the water i'd have no place to dock it well here's so. the thing you know what you could do you could come on up to appleton right down the road from my house literally i didn't realize this i'm at the northern tip of lake uh winnebago you just drive into the street and just drop it right in the water right there i mean we're talking oh. i could walk there in five minutes but here's the thing where do, where do i put it then when i'm done driving it around you know what i mean who knows? It's like, <laughs> I don't want to keep plugging it out of the water all the time. It's like, I want to just have it, you know, come and go as I please. Yeah. That would be ideal. Yeah. What, I, we literally found that exploring one day. I'm like, oh, let's go try down this. Oh, this. I think there's water. Oh, my God, this is the end. And <laughs> we had to stop. I uh, followed the GPS like in the office. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, indeed. I, well, just you know, go, I just want to go fishing. That's all I want to do right now. So, <laughs> uh, Well, you know, with yesterday being your birthday, we now are in the 28 day stretch day where you're way older than I am. Yeah. Yeah. It's all that wisdom and knowledge I got, you know, while, while, while you were deciding when you wanted to come out, I was already, you know, rolling and drooling. So you had yeah, serious absolutely. negotiations for 28 days. That's I, four full I weeks. Was. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm four weeks smarter than you. How's that sound? <laughs> You're a lot smarter than just four weeks on me. Um, let's let's talk about Raw last night, and you're going to probably say, "But do we have to?" And I'm going to tell you, we do. Yeah, I know. It's because of Damien's stupid rules. It's like, he, right. you know, I love how he only comes on when there's shows he wants to watch, and he doesn't have to sit through three oh, hours. Dave. Of nonsense. Oh, Dave, he has pouted. He has not been on the PWR oh, today know. program. For three weeks. I know. And you know what's funny about that? It's like, come on, dude, do your job just because you're not, you know, see, but that's him. You know what I mean? Now you guys understand what I've had to put up with. I mean, you've put up with it longer because you've worked with him longer, but right. good God, if he doesn't get his way, oof, right. he's People whining. forget that I had that chair before you had it and you made it even yeah. better, but I dealt with it as well. I mean, I dealt with it. Oh, brutal, you know, but hey, you know what? That's fine because you're still in last place. And that's at the end of the day, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, let's talk, let's talk draft right away before we go into Raw, because I mean, honestly, this is going to be more fun than Raw. Um, you and I made a trade and the trade is done yes. and it's official. Yeah, we um, actually did it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we did it a couple weeks ago, but we had it under wraps and um, I don't think it ever got made an official, was announced. Uh, I know we talked about it, but it, it is official. It's in the books now. I have lost Jinder Mahal to Dave Hero. Yes. Dave Hero gives up Kevin Owens to the man they call me dead, so I have an active wrestler. And that doesn't seem fair at the beginning. However, David Hero making moves, serious negotiations, as he says. Exactly. Dropping uh, Jinder Mahal, dropping 25 points falling back down to third place and picking up Karrion Cross, And with yes. NXT's Great American Bash coming up, even though there's no points on that, I feel Karrion Cross is a man on the rise. I mean, a huge rise. So uh, totals real quick. Uh, the man they call Meathead leading 735 in second place, Drew Baydala at 520, who, uh, uh, to be honest, I thought he'd be making moves too. Out of his nine talent roster, you know, nine slots, two of them are injured. Yeah, well, let's not forget, me in third place, I still have Roman Reigns, who has yet to get me any points. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, we've got a big pay-per-view that's coming up, Extreme Rules, and when we get to talking about Raw, uh, tied for last, by the way, Damian and Linda, but, I mean, Linda will make moves, too. It'll be fine. Damian will be in last the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the rosters are updated. Karrion Cross now goes to uh, Team Super Friends, and yes, uh, I have does. Kevin Owens. Yes. And, I, you know what, it's a great trade for both of us because I wanted to get a little bit younger. You like Canadians. I should <laughs> Kevin Owens. I don't know what that's all about. Well, see, exactly. But now you do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just me showing my four, my, my 28 days more of wisdom and knowledge you know, by pulling <laughs> off such a trade. There it is. Fair enough. All right. Let's talk Raw last night. Um, it opened with a brawl. <sighs> so Samoa Joe was in the year. We, we have the three-hour show to talk about. And we're not going to take yeah. three hours. But no. <laughs> let's try to get a little enthusiasm there. I didn't mind the brawl. It was something different than I saw in the last couple weeks. Okay, it was it was different. Yeah, you know what? It was a nice hot open to raw. Yeah, something different. It wasn't okay. Let's show an empty building with people behind right. glass. Watch people come down to talk. It's like, oh shit! There's already something going on. What is the, what, what's happening here? Yeah, so, led by Samoa Joe. Samoa yes. calls for help. Uh, basically, what it was was a double contract signing, and the double contract was for the. Uh, WWE, <coughs> excuse me, WWE Championship. It would be McIntyre and Ziggler for the Raw Women's Championship. Asuka and Sasha Banks with her friend Karen. I mean uh, Bailey, um, <laughs> Freudy in there. Uh, her friend yes, Bailey yes. at her side. Um, they go at each other a few more times. Uh, really, no heat between Ziggler and McIntyre. Ziggler no, was a very smart. Believe, no, no one believes Ziggler is a threat to, to Drew McIntyre. That's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. I really do think, and we didn't think this at this point. Maybe you said it because you got that four weeks on me. But mm -hmm. they really shot themselves in the foot when they made two huge men champions at WrestleMania. They no, had no they credible didn't. opponents. No. Yeah. Well, 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 they would have if they wouldn't have had guy. They just did a terrible job booking all the all the undercard heels. Around them. Did. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let's yeah. face it. With WrestleMania, and I know we're jumping around now. Sure. Roman Reigns was supposed to be Goldberg. It wasn't supposed to be Braun Strowman. Right. So then you know, Roman Reigns would have had you know, different programs to work with. But I man, think he I go, did better with the smaller guys. I, I really think that Braun Strowman struggles with the smaller guys, and I think that Drew McIntyre struggling. Period. As much as I want him to be champion, he is Drew struggling. McIntyre can't. He, he's he can't be Drew McIntyre. Right now, he's a watered-down version of the Scottish psychopath, and I keep yeah. seeing him every week. They have basically neutered Drew McIntyre. Because here's why. He has – Bobby Lashley was his greatest opponent. Yeah. And that was one and done. How is that one and done? They could have gone on for a couple of months with that because two big beasts fighting, and now you're dropping down. To, to Dolph, and, and listen, when I say dropping down, I'm not saying that Dolph Ziggler isn't great, he's fantastic, but Dolph Ziggler, his time has come and gone. Nobody believes he has a chance to. And it could be made believable if he had a run of, I don't know, six months of him just beating bigger name talents where he could finally look like he's a credible opponent again. He literally just got traded and said, you know what, I get to go for the championship. Dave, are you there? Sounds like we lost Dave Hero for a bit. Uh, I assume he'll be chiming back in in just a moment. But uh, we talk about with Drew McIntyre only going one time with Bobby Lashley, and they made Bobby look super strong. But once he got beat by McIntyre, and again, it's not down to Apollo Crews. It's not you know, that we're talking down about the United States Championship belt or Bobby Lashley or MVP or even Apollo Crews. But we're talking about the fact that he's not wrestling for the top belt anymore. The United States Championship is supposed to be a strong belt, but it's not the strongest. The WWE Championship right now isn't even strong at all. And if you have to go down to the United States Championship, wow, that, uh, that's something else. Dave, have you joined us? Yes, there I am. Well, I hey, don't know what happened here. Who knows? That me? was perfect timing, though. I just went off on a, a diatribe there, but uh, right when I asked, you showed up. See, and you know, I, I heard you talk about about the the, the U.S. champ. It's like uh, Apollo Cruz; he's the number two guy. Yeah, you know what it is. If you watch Monday Night Raw, who are the stars of the show right now? 
Right now, it's uh, I mean the ones that are on TV or Star because Star's a hefty definition. Who, who comes across as the stars of Monday Night? Uh, I, honestly, in my opinion, no one. They had they had an opportunity of doing something cool with Andrade and Garza, and now mm-hmm. they're going to screw that up because those two would have been a great heel tag team. Yes, that they could have done some really cool stuff with. And now they're already teasing, splitting them up, and having them work with Big Show, a guy that shouldn't... I love Big Show, okay? I love Big Show, too, yeah. He's a great attraction, but why is he back? We don't need him right now. Let's try to elevate... You know, it's it's like... He's back to elevate Randy Orton, who doesn't need it. Well, it's just... No, you know what it is? If I'm Randy Orton, and I look at the current Raw roster, who's over enough to be in a program with him right now? No one. So I'm gonna work with I'm gonna work with somebody that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, and, and it's and not just the comfort. Going. It's I mean, who else is there? What is he gonna do? Work with Seth Rollins again or you know Rey what? Mysterio? Or? I say separate Alistair Black from Humberto Del Rio and let Alistair Black work with Randy Orton. There you go. A chance for Randy to get him up higher, and a well, chance for Randy to yeah. You know, because let, let, let's face it, and we've said this, you know. Many a times, sure. or, the, or or mucho times, I don't believe Rey Mysterio and Aleister Black are friends. You know what I mean? I just I believe don't... it more with uh, um, Humberto because maybe he's you know got a, a Latino I just hero. Yeah, don't see it, and it's not believable. Let Aleister Black be Aleister Black. That he let him go off and do his own thing. He doesn't need friends. He doesn't need tag team partners. All he needs is himself, and that's what he should be doing. And that entrance. We didn't even get the entrance tonight. No, no. I mean, the most over guy on Raw right now is, is our truth if you really think about it. Yeah. He's the most entertaining talent on Monday Night Raw is our truth and, and Zelina Vega. As and, far Zelina, as and that's why the tag team should be Andrade and Angel Garza. You have yes. Zelina Vega there. She sounded great on my phone. Again, I had hopes for Raw tonight, or excuse me, last night. I had hopes for him because it started off different. She mm-hmm. was out there talking. She got interaction with Flair. That was new to me. So and I, what, you know what? Bless, bless Ric Flair's heart. They are wheeling out a seventy-year-old man, in, you know, with, with COVID now. You know, getting, uh, you know, it's it's uh, second run. It's like, why is Rick doing this? He doesn't need to be doing this right now. I don't get it. If Randy's not there, why is Rick there? Right. Rick wants to be on TV. He wants to work again. I mean, think about uh, the man wants to get out and do stuff. Oh, of course. Yeah. But And they're so it, shorthanded. It has to make sense. That's the thing. Yeah. And you know what it is, is I'm watching everything, and I've said this before, I feel like I've been repeating myself the last few weeks, yeah. Re- professional wrestling needs an audience. And it's, they don't, obviously they don't have one, and certain things aren't, aren't transitioning well, certain things aren't translating well. I mean, I'm watching Rey Mysterio's kid get his ass handed to him, and I don't care because I don't see reaction. You right. know what I mean? You don't see 15,000, like, you know, freaking out that a kid's getting exactly. beat up. See other kids or other women covering their eyes or gasping like, oh my God, this is terrible. Yeah. Because a, a, as, a, as a species, I believe us humans are desensitized to a lot of things. So mm-hmm. sometimes we need to look at things through other people's eyes to get that feeling. And right now it's just like, there's nothing I have seen on Raw or SmackDown, or NXT, or AEW, mm-hmm. that makes me say, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And it's because that the, that nothing is organic, where it, it, it can grow and resonate, and you can feel something. And right now, I'm not feeling anything watching any of the shows, because there isn't, a, because there isn't, a, um, there's no booze and cheers. Yeah. So, like I said, I had hopes. And they got crushed. Uh, I want to talk about this segment specifically. MVP wrestles Apollo Crews. MVP retired after WrestleMania. 
And that's fine that he shows up and wrestles. I don't hate MVP. I like watching him wrestle. I like him being on the microphone. He's mm-hmm. probably, no pun intended, been the MVP because the guy's on every week and he talks and he talks well. I enjoy it. He's really hitting a groove. I really like him being there. However, why does MVP need to win over Apollo Crews? You just weakened your United States champion. And no, then... It's, it, no, it's not weakening him because it wasn't a clean finish. I understand that. But if you go to the next match, the one with Bobby Lashley in the uh, – that was the two-on-one, right, where they had Ricochet and um, Cedric Alexander. Mm-hmm. Ricochet brought it to Bobby Lashley. Bobby looked like he was getting beat. I mean, he had the strong finish, but mm-hmm. one, the guy hasn't been around forever. Two, yes, you told us Ricochet once beat Bobby Lashley to wrestle Brock Lesnar. Right, but It doesn't still, make any sense. Still one, one. It's still two-to-one. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Well, and, and that's the problem. I, it, it, again, when you feel like there's no stars on the show, it makes it even harder to watch. There isn't yeah. one person that I need to watch. Like, oh, I hope they're on tonight. I, I haven't, you haven't felt that. No. Nope. I mean, say what you want about John Cena. John Cena got a reaction, but what did he get? It was a crowd reaction. Well, there's no crowd. Right. And again, that's what's hurting it. Like right now, there's been all the COVID nineteen issues where. Guys like Adam Pierce and uh, and Renee Young and and, and Jamie Noble and, and others that have you know not now been tested positive. It's like okay, you know what? Let's just take a break because nothing's working. The ratings are on the tank. No one's truly invested. Now you're going to go into an extreme rules horror show. <laughs> I do not want to watch another cinematic match. Stop it. I give Uncle. You win. Oh, you're getting it though. You're absolutely getting it. I don't want to. It's not professional wrestling. It's not what I believe is professional wrestling. It's like watching a sitcom or or a movie. And it's not what I signed up for to watch. No. No. And, uh, you know, while, while the break, which would be unprecedented, right? While the break probably is needed. They are too deep in with networks and too deep in with sponsors and all this other stuff okay, you know to what? get one. And yes, that's true. But guess what? Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NFL, and the National Hockey League and the mm-hmm. NCAA all sign sure. team contracts. Yep. And they're Work. coming back. Yeah. Work around it. Yeah. They should. I mean, obviously we should. I mean, you know, uh, Modelo has, has wrestlers to sponsor. So, you know, we got to get those things going. That was a, a shot at the uh, alcoholic beverage sponsoring wrestling there. But yes, ah, oh, man, you know, uh, coming up this week, hopefully on Thursday again, we talked to Damian Nelson, who has powdered on us for the three weeks, because this coming Wednesday night, um, tomorrow night, we're going to have the week one of two of Fighter Fest. And um, I'm really yeah, looking forward to also, some of these matches. And also the Great American Bash, which slid in there out of nowhere, out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you watched last week's show with Shane with Hurricane Helms, with Shane, yep. we, we did Be the Booker for Fighter Fest and Great American Bash, where Shane and I dissected the first night's this coming Wednesday night's shows. And mm-hmm. we we predict or we decide or how we would have the pencil who would win and lose and who would go on forward. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why you got to like and subscribe to the videos and so you can get the content. I mean, it was Absolutely. like an over an hour show, right? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, Shane and I, I can an, go. I heard an argument about a $100 bill, too, something like that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't want to change all the faces on the money right now, but I mean, apparently Shane wants to put Ricky Morton on the $100 bill. <laughs> you think he's a C note? Ricky Morton's a C note? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, Ricky sells, so why not, I guess? Apparently. I mean, again, you know, come November, I'm voting for Ronald Dwayne, so we'll you have, have to, to see how that works out. You absolutely have to. I have to, because that's the only one I believe in. So, mm-hmm. unless David Hero was on a ticket, unless you want to be my running mate. We'll you know what? The way this whole political thing works, I'm happy with my business being my own business. I don't need people <laughs> to know what's going on. Fair enough. All right, folks. Yes. We could go farther into Raw, honestly, Dave. There's no need. But but, but for what? There's, l- listen, if, if you're listening this morning, you're 20 minutes in. We saved you two hours and 40 minutes. Yep, because they're hard, hard top of the hour now. Yes. No overrun. I mean, where was Nia Jax? She nope. should have been there. 
She yep. should have talked about, you know, getting rid of Charlotte Flair. And uh, taking stop, that heat and rising on it. Garza and Andrade. That tag team is special. That's like an old Midnight Express type tag team. You know, an yep. old Arnold Tully type tag team. One that you need that can grind up baby faces and just get heat there. They would be so Chew great. and spit them out, right. Yeah, it's just like, please stop. Let Big Show become a special attraction. I don't want to see him every week. Okay. Right. And he's can only we, there for Randy Orton. There's you know no, no other business. My highlight was for Raw was we did not have another skit with the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits. <laughs> we were told the conclusion was last week when Thank the Street Profits won. Because that was getting old. And I like Montez Ford. I like everyone involved in that whole thing. But uncle, I needed to tap out on that because that that's not selling tickets. That's not having people tune in to watch. Speaking of selling tickets, we've been selling tickets for the last 20 minutes and 45 seconds. So thank you for listening. For Dave Hero, I'm the man they call me in. Thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.